Cape Cod Standard Times, July 27, 1974. The body of a young woman who appeared to be in her 20s was found in the dunes area east of the Race Point Coast Guard Station shortly after 6 p.m. Friday. An autopsy was to be performed Saturday morning. The body apparently had been there for a week at least. Police Chief James Meads of the Provincetown Department said the dead woman's body was spotted in a clump of scrub pine about a mile east of the station. Cause of death was undetermined. This small news story it was on page one at the bottom of the Cape Cod Standard Times on July 27, 1974, and that was really the first time that the public heard about an unsolved homicide case in Provincetown that has really continued to linger now for 45 years, so much so that we at the newspaper have had to look through our microfiche archives to, to uh, look at the early stories. This is a podcast about the Lady of the Dunes case and other unidentified bodies, skeletal parts, and unsolved cold cases in our region. My name's Mary Ann Bragg. I'm a reporter with the Cape Cod Times, and I'm here with the Sunday editor, Mary Weatherby. The Times has been covering the Lady of the Dunes case since that first news story in 1974. But the recent use in California of DNA profiles combined with genealogy family tree building to solve a 1970s cold case uh, involving the Golden State Killer has now led to the use of that same type of technology in both the Lady of the Dunes case and another cold case, according to Cape and Islands DA Michael O'Keefe. Marianne, what's the Cape Cod Times' most recent Lady of the Dunes story about? Police and the district attorneys, ever since the case uh, kind of happened, have been have tried so many different ways to try to ID the Lady of the Dunes, uh, the woman who was found. And so, um, but none of it has really worked at all. So here we are 45 years later. Um, and then within the last year has been this new use of um, DNA profiling combined with genealogy databases uh, like Ancestry.com, 23andMe, where the, the combination of those two techniques has allowed law enforcement to ID either unidentified victims of homicides or actually um, identify DNA that's been left at a crime site and put, those, put that DNA evidence together with a named person. So um, all of that super exciting. They're really leading the way in California. And um, I was curious about whether they've started to use that technology here in Massachusetts, specifically for the Lady of the Dunes case. And um, in then talking with uh, the district attorney here, Michael O'Keefe, within the last month, um, they have actually begun to work on two cases here, which is really exciting. So there's the Lady of the Dunes case they're looking into, and also another one that um, he didn't really want to talk too much about. So that's really kind of what this first story is about, plus it kind of explains how it all works. So, so why does this case matter to those of us on Cape Cod? Well, let's see. Um, As I mentioned, really, every single new police chief in Provincetown, every detective, really, I think there must be a very big box of paper that sits in that police station. Um, Everybody really wants to try to crack that case um, in the police station. And I think um, it's maybe kind of a, it could be considered a little bit of a haunting presence in the town, the um, the body is buried at a private church cemetery, and um, I just think people, it's not like they think about it a lot, but it is just, it's something that's there, and so um, I, th- I think it's important for that reason, and also just the potential to actually um, put a name to that person, possibly even find a family member 
um, or two would be, I think people would think that was a really good thing. And the case is also among the oldest unsolved mysteries on the Cape, isn't it? Right. Uh, so this, it kind of has two things. One is there are about, um, I think it's 11 unsolved homicides since 19, the 1970s on the Cape and Islands. And so this is one of the oldest ones of an unsolved homicide. And then there's also um, 20 what are called either unidentified bodies or skeletal parts. That's like a femur or something like that. And because we live on the coastline, there are a number of just bones, I guess, human bones that wash up uh, on the shoreline or get caught in fishing nets. But of that list of uh, 20, there's actually four unidentified bodies, and the Lady of the Dunes is one of those four. So Marianne, how did you get started on the Lady of the Dunes story? Okay, so there on Twitter, there is a, an account called the Lady of the Dunes account. It's a Twitter account. And I've tried to find out who that is. And they don't respond with, you know, questions like, could you contact us? But anyway, so that account, particularly starting last year when this whole um, case called the Golden State Killer was broke, a cold case in California with this new use of DNA plus genealogy, that Twitter account really started dinging everybody in the news business our newspaper, all kinds of media outlets all over the place in the region, specifically about the Lady of the Dunes, and then some of the early breakthroughs that another genealogy, forensic genealogist, genealogy group called the DNA Doe Project. There were, so this Twitter account was really dinging everybody in the news business to try to write about it. So finally, I don't know what she said at some point she dinged me on my twitter account and then i just decided i'm just gonna try to get find out about it so that was last august here we are in april but it it took a while but yeah that's how we got started thanks marianne listeners can read marianne's latest story about the Lady of the Dunes case, and see the list of those 11 unsolved homicides at capecudtimes.com slash ladyofthedunes. Thank you, Mary. Um, So the future podcasts that we're planning include some of the people that I've talked to in this first story, Um, a genealogist, a DNA expert, a coroner, and also the woman whose sister found, actually found the Lady of the Dunes body back in 1974. And we're also planning other stories as well as we follow up uh, with the district attorney about the outcomes with this new use of technology. So thank you for listening.